Hi guys, today we are going to be having a look through what might be the complete Oasis UK CD collection. But there are a few rules. First off, in this CD collection it's just CDs that could be bought in the shops. I'm not including promotional CDs because some of the promos are really rare and go for like £500 a shot. So this is just CDs that could be bought in the shops in the UK. I also haven't duplicated things like the creation version of Definitely Maybe and the Big Brother version of Definitely Maybe. If there is a reissue of an album or a CD where just a serial number has been changed, I haven't bothered with that. And I've also tried to not double up on specific rare songs or rare live tracks. So if there's like a particular rare version of Supersonic, say, I'll just include one CD on which that track is included. So hopefully this CD collection should cover every single officially released song by Oasis in the UK. So let's start right at the beginning. On the 11th of April 1994, Oasis released their first single, Supersonic. It reached number 31 in the charts. A little over two months later, they released their second single, Shaker Maker. This one did significantly better, reaching number 11 in the UK charts. And then, another two months later, give or take a week or so, they released the third advanced single from their debut album, and the single was Live Forever. Live Forever was their first top 10 chart entry, coming in right at number 10. And so, those first three singles that had paved the way for the debut album had done their job, and when Definitely Maybe was released on the 29th of August, so just 21 days, three weeks after the Live Forever single, it went straight in at number one in the album charts. About six weeks after the release of Definitely Maybe, they released the final single from that album, and it was this. Cigarettes and Alcohol. Released on the 10th of October 1994, it reached number 7 in the UK singles charts. Next up, Oasis set themselves a very ambitious challenge. They tried to get a Christmas number 1 in their first year of releasing material as a band. So, on the 18th of December 1994, they released this, the single Whatever. It reached number three in the UK charts, but I think had they not released it at the most difficult time of year to get a number one, they probably would have had that as their first chart topper. As it turned out, their next single was their first number one, but it was a little bit of a wait before they released it. It was a good four months later when Oasis released, some might say, it was released on the 24th of April 1995 and went in at number one. For the next four months, Oasis didn't release anything else while they were working on their second album, but the next single was one half of the Battle of Britpop and caused enormous media attention to be focused on the band. Released on the 14th of August 1995, the same date as Blur's Country House, it was Roll With It. Roll With It came in at number two in the UK charts, coming in second to Blur's Country House, in part because Oasis released only one CD and Blur released two different formats for their single, both of which counted towards the charts. Now, a lot of people don't realize that the next new material released by Oasis wasn't the second album. It was this. The Help Album. Released on the 9th of September 1995, The Help Album was a charity album to raise funds for the War Child charity, and the opening track was by Oasis and Friends, meaning Johnny Depp and his then girlfriend Kate Moss, doing a much more laid-back acoustic version of Fade Away. 
The whole CD is a fantastic Britpop extravaganza and Noel Gallagher also plays in the last track alongside Paul McCartney in a band that just called themselves for that one song, The Smoking Mojo Filters. And so after two releases that resulted in massive media attention, the Battle of Britpop roll with its single and the Help album on which they performed the opening track, Oasis then released What's the Story Morning Glory, their second album. What's the Story Morning Glory was released on the 2nd of October 1995. And as most people know, it spent a long time at number one. It was their biggest selling album of all time and is considered around the world as one of the all time British rock and roll classics. While Oasis lost to Blur in the Battle of Britpop, once their two albums were released and Morning Glory absolutely trounced The Great Escape, that long-term victory was sealed by the release of this. Wonderwall was released on the 30th of October 1995, exactly four weeks after the release of the album. It reached number two in the UK charts but it was their biggest worldwide hit. It was being played in America, Australia, Europe, all over the world, and it remains today their most popular song of all time. Now, Wonderwall was the band's final official release in 1995, but in that year there were also two more kind of unofficial releases. The first one was released about a month after Wonderwall, and it's this, Wibbling Rivalry. It was released by Fierce Panda, not Creation, and it's a recording on a cassette recorder of enemy journalist John Harris interviewing Noel and Liam. The interview was actually recorded almost two years previously, towards the beginning of 1994, just a few months after they had come back from Amsterdam after the whole band, except for Noel, had been deported for starting a massive brawl on a ferry. Wibbling Rivalry is a really funny listen and you can hear Noel just winding Liam up and winding Liam up and winding Liam up. And it was so popular that it apparently actually charted at number 52, which is the highest ever charting for an interview release in the UK. And the final release in 1995, I don't actually know when it was released, except that it was just sometime in 1995. And it's this. It's called XFM CD2. It contains 17 songs and the 16th song is Oasis Married With Children Live. And it's a really interesting listen. It's not the acoustic version from Definitely Maybe, but a massive rocked up version. It's a bit like Married With Children crossed with Diggsy's Dinner or Cigarettes and Alcohol. It's how they used to play it live before they recorded it for Definitely Maybe. As far as I'm aware, this is the only time that version of that song has ever been released. I could find no record of the CD's release on the official charts company's website, so it may not have charted, it may have just been a very small release, it may perhaps have been bundled with a magazine, I'm not sure. On the 19th of February 1996, Oasis released the final single from What's the Story Morning Glory? Don't Look Back in Anger. Don't Look Back in Anger went straight in at number one. It was Oasis's second number one, and it also went platinum. The remainder of 1996 was a fairly quiet one, release-wise, for Oasis, but they did appear in several quite interesting places. I don't have the exact date, but at some point in September of 1996, this was released. It's called Later Britbeat, and it's a compilation of live performances by various Britpop bands on Later with Jules Holland. Oasis appear on track 10, with Noel doing an acoustic version of Wonderwall. But if you can get your hands on a copy of this CD, you won't regret it. The track list is incredible. Paul Weller, The Charlatans, Supergrass, Elastica, Edwin Collins, Ocean Colour Scene, Ash, Suede, McCall Monton Butler, Oasis, Radiohead, Super Furry Animals, and on and on and on. An absolutely incredible lineup of British artists. Now, this next one is technically 
not actually Oasis, but it is a song that Noel did perform with Oasis and while he was in Oasis. And it's this, Setting Sun by the Chemical Brothers. This was released on the 12th of October 1996. It was written and sung by Noel and it went straight in at number one. As the year began to wind down, on the 5th of November 1996, Oasis released the Definitely Maybe singles box set. It contained all the singles from Definitely Maybe and an interview disc. And then, five days later, the What's the Story Morning Glory box set was also released. I'm quite lucky to have these because most of these were made fairly cheaply and in subsequent years the hinges have broken. Most people who have one of these old box sets have got at least one snapped or broken hinge. As you can see here, my Morning Glory box set is still sealed. It looks like it may have been opened in the past by the person I bought it off. I don't know, but I'm not going to tangle with it just in case I open a previously unopened Oasis box set. There was only one more official Oasis release in 1996, and it wasn't a charts release. It was a bonus CD that came with the VHS there and then. The bonus CD just contains three tracks, Wonderwall, live from Earl's Court, Cigarettes and Alcohol, live from Main Road, and Champagne Supernova, live from Nebworth with John Squire. In 1996, Oasis didn't try for a Christmas number one, as they had previously. However, a tribute band to Oasis did try. Scottish Oasis tribute band No Way Sis released I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing. They released it on the 21st of December 1996 and it got to number 27. I know it's not technically Oasis, but it's a bit of fun and for some reason my CD collection didn't seem quite complete without it. It was a quiet first half of the year for Oasis in 1997 until the release of the first single from their third album, which was this, Do You Know What I Mean? Do You Know What I Mean was released on the 7th of July 1997 and went straight in at number one. Almost two months later, on the 21st of August, Be Here Now was released, the most hyped album of Oasis's career. Be Here Now went straight in at number one, receiving five star reviews everywhere and being played continuously on the radio. And now we come to one of my favorite parts of my Oasis CD collection. This bad boy is the Be Here Now box set, which was only available to fan club members. It looks like a vinyl record, but it's actually just a box containing the CD and a booklet. Strictly speaking, it was just a fancy box and a fancy book to accompany the CD, but somehow it's still one of my favourite things in the collection because it's just cool. There weren't that many of them made and to an Oasis collector like myself, it's something special to own. A month after the release of Be Here Now, the second single was released, Stand By Me. Stand By Me was released on the 22nd of September 1997 and reached number two. And that was the final Oasis release in 1997. They hit the ground running early in 98, however, with the final single from Be Here Now, All Around the World. All Around the World was released on the 12th of January 98 and again went to number one. The song is over nine minutes long and was the longest song ever to reach number one. The remainder of 1998 was, again, fairly quiet for Oasis. On the 3rd of November, they released their first compilation album, which was The Master Plan. The Master Plan reached number two in the album charts. That year, however, there were two other interesting releases containing tracks not released anywhere else. I don't have actual exact dates for either of the other two 1998 releases, but I do have a copy. This is the first one. It's called Rock the Dock. The album is a creation released compilation of songs in support of Liverpool dock workers who were in some kind of dispute with a trade union. And track two is Don't Look Back in Anger live at Earl's Court. Now, as far as I'm aware, 
that has not been released anywhere else. So I think this is the only place that that song, the audio of that song, has ever been put out on CD. And the last release that I'm aware of from 1998 is this. And I will admit to being a little bit baffled as to what it is and where it came from. The CD is called Zoo Magazine CD Sampler 12 and it's dated 1998. But as far as I'm aware, Zoo Magazine didn't exist in 1998. And the songs on it are consistent with that era. You've got Embrace, All You Good Good People, Robbie Williams, Lazy Days. But Zoo Magazine didn't actually publish until 2004 in the UK, so I'm not sure where this came from. However, track one is Oasis playing Be Here Now, the song, live at the Hammerstein Ballroom. It's a really good version as well, and I'm pretty sure this is the only place that version has ever been released. Nineteen ninety nine was a quiet year for Oasis release wise. On the twenty third of October, this was released, which is just Liam Gallagher, but it was during the Oasis era and I kind of felt like I needed it to complete my CD collection. It's Liam Gallagher and Steve Craddock from Ocean Colour Scene doing a cover of the song Carnation by the Jam. It's a really interesting version of the song. I love Liam's voice on it. His voice hadn't switched over to the full gravel of later years at that point. It was still very pure and clear. And it's really interesting to hear Liam singing something that's quite melodically challenging, all kinds of key changes and weird obscure chords. He does it really well. Carnation got to number six in the UK charts. And the only other release that I'm aware of in 1999 is this. This CD came free with the October edition of Melody Maker in 1999 and it contains an Oasis track which is Supersonic recorded live in 1994 and it's not the version on the Live Forever single. I fished around listening to different versions here and there I'm not a hundred percent sure but I think this is a unique recording of Supersonic in 94 that hasn't appeared anywhere else. In the year 2000, Oasis were back, albeit in their second incarnation. And on the 7th of February, they released their first single from the fourth album. And the single was Go Let It Out. And Go Let It Out went straight to number one. And just three weeks later, on the 28th of February 2000, they released the album, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Standing on the Shoulder of Giants was their fourth studio album in a row to go straight in at number one. It was almost two months later, however, when they released the second single from Standing on the Shoulder of Giants, which was Who Feels Love. Released on the 17th of April, this one didn't quite have the impact of the album or the previous single and only managed to scrape number four. The third and final single from Standing on the Shoulder of Giants was released a little under two months later, again, Sunday Morning Call. Released on the 3rd of July 2000, it had a similar, slightly lukewarm response for Oasis and only managed to get to number four in the charts. On the 12th of November 2000, however, they released their first ever live album, Familiar to Millions. Familiar to Millions featured live songs from their career so far, the first four albums, and it reached number five. And there were two versions of this CD. There's the purple and the red version. The red version has two CDs, the purple version has just one. After the release of Familiar to Millions, 2001 was a silent year for Oasis, release-wise. It wasn't until the 15th of April 2002 that they released the first single from their next album, which was this, The Hindu Times. The Hindu Times went straight in at number one, and with this release, Oasis did something that they did for this and the next album, which was, for the first time, they did what was in effect a CD1 and a CD2 for every single. The CD2 
was actually a DVD. Oasis also released a DVD single for every single in the Heathen Chemistry and Don't Believe the Truth era. These DVD singles contained two audio tracks. One was the lead single and one was the demo version of that single. They're all very interesting listening. The next album followed around six weeks later on the 1st of July, Heathen Chemistry. As usual, the album went straight in at number one. And less than three weeks later, Heathen Chemistry was followed by the single, Stop Crying Your Heart Out. Released on the 17th of June, 2002, Stop Crying Your Heart Out was also released on CD and DVD and it reached number two. The next CD came out in an unexpected place, The Sunday Times. Released on the 23rd of June, 2002, this little bonus CD was released with The Sunday Times and contained, among other tracks, the demo version of Gas Panic, the demo version of Stop Crying Your Heart Out, and an exclusive interview with Noel, Liam and Gem. Exactly three months later, on the 23rd of June, Oasis's only double A side was released, Little by Little and She Is Love. They once again released it also on DVD. Little by Little and She Is Love reached number two in the charts. Less than a month later, on the 14th of October 2002, the NME released a CD called One Love, on which there was a very unusual Oasis track. That song was track seven, a very sort of chilled out acoustic cover of Merry Christmas Everybody by Slade, performed acoustically by Noel. This CD was a slightly smaller scale follow-up to the Help album In Aid of War Child. I haven't been able to find any information on where this CD reached in the charts, so it's possible it wasn't released to the charts or that it didn't chart. After Merry Christmas Everybody, that was it for Oasis for 2002. And in 2003, there were only two releases. The single, Songbird, was released on the 2nd of February, 2003. Again, it was also released on DVD, and Songbird got to number three in the charts. All of the DVD singles from the Heathen Chemistry era could also be collected in a fan club only DVD box. The only other Oasis release that year was on this. This is the 2003 NME Awards CD and it's called The Big Bash. Track 10 is a song by Oasis called the Cage, which is apparently the name of the secret track on Heathen Chemistry. Two thousand and four was another quiet year for Oasis. Nothing released. On the sixteenth of May, two thousand and five, the first single was released from the upcoming album Don't Believe the Truth, and that single was. Lila. Released once again on CD and DVD, Lila went straight in at number one. Just two weeks after the release of Lila, Oasis released Don't Believe the Truth. On the 30th of May 2005, Don't Believe the Truth was released in two formats. One, the straight CD, and the other, a limited edition CD and DVD set. Don't Believe the Truth went straight in at number one. And less than two weeks later, on the 10th of June 2005, as a bonus CD with the Daily Mirror, this was released. It contains an exclusive interview and also a live version of Little by Little that I don't think has ever actually been released anywhere else. Little by Little live recorded at Finsbury Park, London, July 2002. 2005 was a good year for interesting and rare Oasis releases. On the 20th of August 2005, this was released with the NME. It's called Oasis on the Road World Tour 2005. And track 13 is a pretty cool version of Oasis playing My Generation live. And as far as I'm aware, that has not been released anywhere else. 
Two days later, on the 22nd of August, the second single from Don't Believe the Truth was released, The Importance of Being Idle. And once again, this was a double CD release, one CD being a DVD containing the demo. The Importance of Being Idle hit number one in the singles charts. Now exactly three months later, on the 22nd of November 2005, we see one of the most interesting and little known Oasis releases of them all. And it's this. The soundtrack contains three all new and exclusive Oasis tracks. Track two is called Who Put the Weight of the World on My Shoulders. Track five is a remix of Morning Glory. It's not bad. And track seven is a new version of Cast No Shadow with Noel singing lead vocals. It's okay, but it's been mixed very, very badly. So when Noel's voice drops down, it kind of disappears into the mix. You can hear the higher notes, but the softer notes just kind of vanish. It's not been produced very well. I would love to hear this version of Cast No Shadow properly produced, cleaned up and re-released somewhere. Just six days later, after the release of the Gold soundtrack on the 28th of November 2005, the final single from Don't Believe the Truth was released. And it was this, Let There Be Love. And Let There Be Love was the final single by Oasis to also include a DVD single. Let There Be Love reached number two in the charts and all the DVDs from the Don't Believe the Truth era could also be collected in a fan club only DVD sleeve. And these ones were all uniquely numbered. It was almost a full year before the next Oasis release, which was actually just a Greatest Hits compilation. Stop the Clocks was released on the 20th of November 2006. It got to number two in the charts and there were a few cool little bits and pieces that you could also get with it. One was this, the Stop the Clocks EP. The only new song on this was the third track, some might say Live in 95, Venue Unknown. And there was also a cool box set version of Stop the Clocks which came with a bonus DVD. Stop the Clocks was the only official Oasis release in 2006 and there were no releases at all in 2007. Almost three years since their last original material release, on the 20th of September 2008, bundled with the NME, Oasis released this. It's the Dig Out Your Soul songbook. It comes with a CD-ROM containing some teaser stuff for the album and the sheet music for the album, which is really interesting. So, if you wanted to hear the songs before the album was released, you could sit down and work them out with a guitar. Nine days later, on the 29th of September, the first single came out, which was Shock of the Lightning. This was just a one CD release and it went to number three in the charts. And Quite strangely, just one week later, the album was released. Just like Don't Believe the Truth, Dig Out Your Soul was released on normal CD and also CD and DVD set. And Oasis's final original material album did exactly what every single original studio album by them did, straight in at number one. A little under two months later, on the 1st of December 2008, Oasis made their final ever bid for Christmas number one. With this ironically titled CD, I'm Out of Time. I'm Out of Time peaked at number 12, their lowest charting single since Supersonic. And finally, in the year 2009, their last single ever came out on the 9th of March, Falling Down. Falling Down, just the same as all the singles from Dig Out Your Soul, only had one CD and no DVD. It peaked at number 10 and that was Oasis's final ever charting single as a band. Six days later, however, this was released. It's called The Dreams We Have As Children and it's technically Noel Gallagher, but 
it was recorded while he was in Oasis. It was recorded live with him and Gem, and it's all Oasis songs bar three. So I kind of feel like it should be included in my collection. This album was made as a benefit for the Teenage Cancer Trust. It was recorded live at the Royal Albert Hall, and it also features Paul Weller on a couple of tracks. In August of that year, Noel left Oasis, and the band was, from that point on, over. On the 14th of June, 2010, this was released. Time Flies, a kind of retrospective, greatest hits album. Time Flies was released to CD in two formats, the standard CD and the yellow box set. As well as the various discs, the yellow box set also included a collectible set of postcards. In 2014, Definitely Maybe was re-released as a three CD set with a bunch of extra tracks and unheard, unreleased recordings. What's the Story Morning Glory was also released shortly after with the same bumper pack of unheard stuff. And last of all, Be Here Now, complete with all the Mustique demos. And I can't show you inside any of these because they are still sealed and I'm not opening them. So guys, that is it. That is my complete Oasis UK CD collection, not including promos. But what have I missed out? I think there could be still other random little CDs or, or secret tracks hidden on promos here and there that I don't know about or I haven't tracked down yet. So if you know of a CD that I've missed that was officially released as a proper Oasis release, not a bootleg, in the UK, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.